Everybody wants things to go back to normal. I'm saying the communists are taking over. My concern is, is people can't see what's coming. My friends have, are leaving. They're leaving California. They can't stand it there, so it's still corrupt. You know, Hawaii has turned into the Communist Republic of China, CCP. No, it has. I mean, it's, I, I love Hawaii, beautiful country, beautiful land, but it's so oppressive. It's become communistic. And it's some of the worst politicians we've ever had. My friends are leaving Hawaii in droves, but the Asians are moving in. This book here, written by Karl Marx in 1848, is coming true today. It is censorship, it is totalitarianism. And, and my poor dad was head of education for the state of Hawaii, PhD, Stanford, Northwestern University of Chicago. He knew nothing about money. And when I, when I read this book here, The Communist Manifesto in 1965, because I went to military school. And in military school, they said, you have to know your enemy. And I realized, I hate to say this, but most of my friends and family are communists. They just don't know it. They're anti-rich, they want to tax the rich, and they're pro-union. When I sit in Hawaii and I look at my classmates and all that, they can barely afford to buy lunch, a lot of them. And then all these Asians come in and they're buying this place. Whether it's, you know, when I was in, in the 60s, the Japanese came in. Most of the hotels are owned by Japanese. They're run by Japanese. And then you have the southern border, right, right on our border right here, wide open. People are coming in in droves. They have smash and grabs. This is all stage two communism. Good morning, 8.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm XRP, future millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. Slightly tired this morning, but feeling pretty good. If you want to watch the rest of that Robert Kiyosaki uh, clip that I was playing to start for the first two minutes, stick around until the end. I'll play the last about six minutes at the end of this video. I just didn't want to start the video with an eight-minute Robert Kiyosaki because I think there's some important things to do on the charts. And then you guys can watch it at the end if you chose choose. So just be informed that if you stay, there is about six minutes left of that clip that I'm going to play at the end. But we have to get an XRP. Last night I came on at about two in the morning. So about six hours, seven hours ago. And I talked about how we were starting a bullish divergence. And if we could have a little bit of volume step in here, we might be able to make a move. But I said, the problem is, is the top end resistance up here looks like it's going to be up here at 65,388 if we can get up there. First, we would have to get by this 62.6 is what we talked about last night. And right now, we're kind of making this weird pattern formation. And I didn't think we had any problem getting up to the 62.8 or 63. It's the problem is, is are we going to get up here to where this cup and handle foul? Because right now, it looks like we're on a continuation pattern and it's been a slow steady decline for quite some time and this volume is not going to get the job done we need more volume otherwise it'll roll over and there's not really much i can point to this morning that changes what we've been looking this looks exactly like it did yesterday the only difference is, is on the 20 day now we've come over the um that red line in the four hour time frame which is good you know, as long as you're over that, you can start some kind of bullish momentum. We need to break first things first for XRP. Let's break this 62,546, which we're almost there. And then let's break 62,873. And then we can try to make this push up to 65,551. When I was saying yesterday, when I said we're going to fall, that's a guarantee. It's just we don't know if we're going to back test first. This is what I was talking about. And you're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? We haven't done anything. We're up 2%. Well, yeah, but still, this is part of the back test I was talking about. Because Bitcoin, when we talked about it yesterday, we talked about, let me bring this in a smaller time frame, but we talked about yesterday for Bitcoin, can we get up here first of all, 39, but then we talked about up here to 40,310, but that's not the, 
the main drop point that we could possibly get up to. Could we even get up there? I don't know if we're going to get up there, but I definitely thought we could get up at least to here. 39,700, then make a run, try to get up to this 40,373 drop point. It's just, those are the obvious spots where it could hit. It's just every time we get up here, we get a high on the RSI. RSI and Stochastic, I mean, we get when the way over uh, bought areas, just by making these little moves, it's because there's no volume pushing us up. So look to see if we can break 39,171 and hold that as support or 39,370, then maybe we could make a push up to here to about 40,337. Um, this is what we were talking about yesterday, these back tests. And that's why I said nothing goes down in a straight line. And it didn't feel like, you know, just like when we go up and we don't have any volume and we say we're going to go down last night and the earlier, we had no volume going down. So we said, we have to look at it the other way and see if we're going to back test. This is exactly what was on tap. XRP future millionaire. Make sure to hit that like button. You guys have been doing phenomenal the last few videos. Obviously my video that I did at two something in the morning. It's got like 900 and something views, but I don't expect those to get the normal views. That That's early in the a.m. Everybody's sleeping. At least the people in the U.S. Um, but it's been phenomenal. And keep it up because the more times you like, the easier it is for me to get my content around on YouTube. So let's finish this Robert Kiyosaki clip because it's vital. Shut up, I can't believe it. If you think strong men are dangerous, you should see what weak men are capable of. So Putin and Xi are very, very strong men. But Biden is doing more damage because he's a wimp. And you know, he opens the whole southern border, lets people through. He evacuates out of Afghanistan. He cuts off oil production in America to keep the greenies happy. So Biden is a very weak man. You have two very strong men, Putin and Premier Xi. This book came out, uh, Communist Manifesto came out in 1848. But in 1965, I left Hawaii and I went to school in New York, military school. First word is mission. What is the mission? Everything is mission driven. And then my instructor to study economics, he had us read the Communist Manifesto, Mein Kampf, Mao's little book and other things. So we understood who the enemy was. What he recognized was the flaws, again, in 1848, the flaws in capitalism. So stage one would be socialism, which we had in 1933, you know, FDR puts us on social security, got welfare, Obamacare, and we've, now we have so many Americans without that government st stimmy check, we're finished. Then he said stage two would kick in. So in 2020, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, I'm not endorsing Trump, who's a friend of mine, or Biden. I'm saying communists took over in 2020. You see, if you really think that Marxism is good and you can kill as many people as you like, then that's what Marx taught. Just look at the numbers of murders. Chinese have killed more people than any of the people in history. Look at their uh, thing on the Uyghurs. They lock them up, they kill them, they use them experiments, they sell them. You know, I've flown all over the world. I've seen Chinese concentration camps. So you can sit there in your little ivory tower Neiman Marcus store and say, oh, this is America. No, it's not. Just look at the contract of a student loan debt is the worst possible debt. As a professional capitalist, I wouldn't touch a student loan debt. And you know who got the money? Communist school teachers at Harvard, Stanford, Columbia. People don't know that like Mao killed, I think, 110 million people, I think. Hitler killed 44 million people. Stalin was one of the biggest murderers of all. But they don't report that in school. Well, I just say, you know, I have uh, four friends. Total is five. We kind of grew up together. We're all billionaires. We don't learn any of that in school. We study history. History is written by the victor, right? Where the victor goes, history. So it's fake. The trouble is without a basic appreciation for history the average young person doesn't know what they're looking at what people may not realize is that history is disturbed by technology for example the roaring 20s was caused by the radio so when the radio came in it was the new authority in the 1920s in the house so the young people said so mommy and daddy said well this is the way it is but in the 1920s my father's generation they said no that's not the way it is i heard it on the radio
that my generation, the boomer generation, was television. This is what the war when Americans started seeing My Lai and the atrocities of Vietnam, that's when the boomers erupted. But that was intentional because, you know, media is socialist, communist. They wanted to show every atrocity possible. So Americans would not support us. Our own media betrayed the troops on the ground. But opposition to the war. 1973, coming back for one year in Vietnam, US involvement in Vietnam and I get spit on, hit by eggs. In my own baby boomers, friends. Four students were killed by I come home, guards. I get spit on at school, Hawaii and all this. They turned, media turned against us, the soldiers, the, three the Marines, the sailors, the demonstrators across women. the Potomac on their way to the It was Pacific. horrible. I was going for my MBA at the University of Hawaii. It only lasted like six months. I couldn't take the fact that I was always criticizing class. What are you doing here? You're a baby killer. Right? Jesus. So our own media turned my generation, the boomer generation, against the soldiers. This guy's fighting for capitalism. And they don't understand that socialists kill the most people in history. That's, we just want to defend it. I don't think Americans see how fast they're coming on. When they opened the doors to China, I flew to Hong Kong and I crossed into China because I wanted to see it before it went west. So I was there, I was riding the buses around China and all that. It was a dirt poor country. Because I still remember riding this bus in China. They had the Chinese guards watching us. You know, I, I blend in because I'm Japanese. And the bus driver's driving along the road. There's this duck farmer. I mean, this was poor. There was no cities and no, no buildings. The Chinese looked like Filipinos because they were so emaciated and, and in the sun. They, were, they lived in mud huts. And I wanted to see it before it turned. So I've been watching this for a long time. Like I said, I went to Vietnam. I fought a number of Chinese soldiers out there. So we, we knew the Chinese were supplying the North Vietnamese. So that's what concerns me is my friend, when, you know, when you say that you can be called Chinese Americans, but the regular people cannot afford to live in Hawaii. That's why homelessness is through the roof out there. It's community. One of the things that's true is how people, how much people enjoy being around you. That makes your life more enjoyable and people mm -hmm. don't think of it that way. They oftentimes think, I want to be the one that's enjoying life, like especially selfish people. If people enjoy being around you, you'll enjoy everything more. The solo effort of going through life, a narcissistic perspective, one of the major problems with that is there's no one to share it with because you're all out for yourself. Even if you get there, you're gonna be filled with sadness and despair. It's not what you want. What you want is to be happy, right? Well, I know you think that you have to be all about yourself to be happy, but in fact, that is a way to ensure unhappiness regardless of success. That's right. You can have a $100 million house and a private jet. If you don't have love, you don't have anything. You're missing the, the key ingredient. You know, it's like having cement but not having water. You have nothing. It's yeah. just hard for people to understand that there's techniques and there's strategies and there's philosophies that can help you steer through this world with a happier life. And that, that, that is a big part of it. A big part of it is embracing love and friendship and camaraderie and being nice to people. It's hard for some people because they're not even nice to themselves. What I'm saying is the way you are with your family and your friends and your loved ones and the people you communicate with, get better at that because we need each other. Love is the most important thing. And that sounds so cliche, but without love, it's all useless. This, this is a really important one because people have this idea that somehow I'm 30 years old, I shouldn't be doing this anymore. I'm 50 years old, I should have learned by now. That's all bull. Throw that away. Toss that shit aside. You could not agree with this more, guys. The reason I shared this from Joe, <clears throat> it, I like to share sometimes motivation within my videos. I love Joe Rogan. There's a lot of people that don't understand him. But if you watch the Joe Rogan experience, listen to him and understand what he's saying over the years. It's a pretty in-depth motherfucker. Um... And it's, he's somebody I would love to sit down with and just fucking smoke a joint with. 
it's on my bucket list. Maybe one day if we get enough uh, enough subscribers. <laughs> but anyhow, so true what he's saying though about age and acting like we always put a number on ourselves. We always act like we have to do something by a certain time. That's bullshit. It's 100% bullshit and he's dead on the money. And this is the most important thing you're going to hear all day. Just listen. Like these ideas of numbers that people have in their head that by a certain age, you should stop. You are alive. And if you are alive and if you are thinking all those numbers that you keep attaching, well, you know, when Einstein was 30, he had already, shut the fuck up. Stop doing that. That That is a waste of your time. And stop saying to yourself, I should be better by now. I'm such a total non-helping thought. What you need to think of is life. You're living, you're alive right now, and if you've made a mistake and you're still continuing to learn and grow, that's, that's all just that. data. You are not your past. You're you. You're you right now. Like the past you did, you might have done some things you wish you hadn't done. Don't dwell on that. You learn from it, that's fine, but don't dwell on it. Just keep moving. Keep moving. You know, use it. Use it as fuel. Say never again. You know, I, I get I get what I did wrong, but don't think that you're that person that made those mistakes. You're the person who's learned. You know, and th to have that attitude is a really important thing. And to not say, why am I doing this now? I could have been doing this my whole life. Well, you you weren't. So <laughs> the f is that going to help? Yeah. You know, you got to just got to not think like that. You just got to be happier doing it now. If I look back on anything I've ever done, mistakes I've ever made, um, paths that I, you know, something that I put out that I didn't quite think, man, maybe I just waited three months before I released that, or maybe I should have, you know, re-edited that blog post a couple more times before I put it online, or uh, those things drive me crazy. The, the shitty things that I've done have dri driven me crazy, but yelling at someone I didn't have to yell at them for, whatever. But the, the most important thing is always for all people to recognize that you're not who you were a year ago. You're not who you were five years ago. You're not who you were last week. You're who you are now. And this is the only shit you have control over. So you got to regulate how much you dwell on regrets of the past. You really okay. got to be careful because it's good to have a little. Because my regrets, whether it's things of professional nature or the very few regrets friendship wise which is one thing that makes me very happy but you know there's there's life is strange there's a lot going on there's a, there's a lot of factors happening in life but for sure who i am now wouldn't have ever happened if i didn't 